Hey there, wonderful people. Thank you all so much for sharing your time with me. Those of you who are new subscribers, welcome to this loving community. I hope that you not only find something here that helps you overcome narcissistic abuse, but also empowers you to be the very best you that you can be. Today, I um, want to share a message that answers a question that we all ask at some point in our journey. And that most frequently asked question among survivors is, can the narcissist change? Many of us stayed with the narc creatures longer than we should have because we truly believed we could do something to make this person feel better or behave better. So we found ourselves pouring every single ounce of love and care we had into them only to receive pure hell in return. Well, today I want to attempt to answer this mind boggling question and hopefully my response will help to lift burdens that many of you carry for the narcissist or narcissists in your life. My message today was inspired by Mark chapter five, verses one through 20. This story in the Bible tells us how Jesus restored a demon possessed man who was so out of his mind that no one, no one around could help him. I'm going to start reading at verse two. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with the chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. After reading these words several times, I immediately thought about those we know as narcissists, sociopaths, psychopaths, borderlines, etc., any etc., excuse me, anyone in the cluster B um, group. I thought about how much we've tried to help them, hoping that today would be a better day for them because we were going to love them a little bit more than we did yesterday. We were hoping that since we've cooked and cleaned just the way they liked us to, that they maybe wouldn't raise their hand to us today or their voice at us. We were hoping since our children are performing their very best in sports at school, that the narc would acknowledge their accomplishments. Or we were hoping that the narcissistic parent would call just to tell us that they're sorry. Or that the coworker whom you've helped every single time that they've asked you to, that they would realize the good you've done and stop spreading rumors about you that are starting to jeopardize your job. But none of this happened. The narcissist in your life didn't change. And in fact, the more you loved or showed concern or care for them, the more or the worse they got, the worse they became. Their behavior didn't change. The ill treatment intensified because the impure spirit they carry absolutely hates love and light. 
This spirit only wants to deal with quarreling, bickering, shaming, blaming, finger pointing, all things negative and all things hellish. So just like the people in the village, you've tried everything, but you failed. So you began to give up. You hated yourself. You allowed doubt and depression to take over. And this made the impure spirit even more powerful. When you got to that point right there, the self-doubt. Feeling there's nothing you could do. Feeling helpless and hopeless. So the unclean spirit within the narcissist became even more hateful and even more abusive because they wanted that, that feeling of hopelessness to continue to pour from you. This spirit drowned out the small glimpse of humanity that you thought you had once seen in the narc. But there you were, feeling helpless and hopeless for change with this person. Finally accepting that there was nothing you can do to make things better. Therefore, you either left him or her or they left on their own. Either way it goes, you came to the point to where you left that person to their own demise. And as you glanced back, you noticed, like the demon-possessed man in the story, that the narc had delved even further into a state of lunacy. You're hearing through the grapevine that his or her aggression has amplified. They're losing the few friends they had. The new supplier has already jumped ship. Family members want nothing to do with them and co-workers cannot wait for them to retire or get fired. This person just cannot be subdued and it seems that he or she needs a place of their own far away from people. They are now in a permanent state of collapse and their soul has been totally consumed with evil. They have hated and raged so much that the number of demons that reside within them has multiplied. They don't know if they're coming or going. There's nothing but utter chaos and turmoil swirling around in the soul of the narcissist. It is in this state of being when the narc actually hits rock bottom. And we know that can be different for every person. But when they hit this point, they're in a full out collapse state with no supply in sight. When he or she is at their absolute worst, that they might be reachable. But hear me out. You are not the one who can reach them. Don't try it. Let's read. When he saw Jesus from a distance, and I'm starting at verse six, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice. What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't don't torture me. For Jesus has said to him, come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked, what is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out into the sea. It was at this moment that this man who was filled with unclean spirits, so many, he no longer even knew the specific name. He just knew that there were a bunch of them. 
And although he chose to live a filthy, disgusting life, working against the light, hating others, trashing his family, lying, cheating, stealing, and maybe even killing, there was a small sliver of humanity within him that cried out to be set free. But only Jesus could hear it or even see it. He no longer wanted to feel constant torment, pain, and misery. He was so entangled with these demons that not even he could help himself out of this situation. Only Jesus could free him. Only Jesus could free the demon infested narcissist. But hear me loud and clear. The narcissist can only be set free if he or she hits rock bottom. But even if that happens, many of them would choose suicide instead because then they wouldn't have to be responsible for their actions. It's all about controlling the narrative to the very end. Now, it's not our place to determine if the narc has reached this point or not. Because as you know, well, this rarely even happens. The chances are still slim to none. The narcissist must come to a place of sincerely crying out for help through his or her own efforts and willingness. So sticking around to find out because you're taking this message as a message of hope, well, for you, that would be self-assassination. This is not a message of hope for your relationship with the narcissist to get better or to one day be on good terms. No, this is a message of hope from a far, far distance to let you know that if the narcissist that you know has a small amount of humanity left within them, then devastating life events could trigger that sliver of humanity and cause he or she to get a glimpse of themselves and therefore cry out to God for help. Now listen, if the narcissist does reach the point of sincerely crying out for help, this does not mean that they're in the clear or even relationship material. This person could go back to their old ways at any moment. This type of change requires a lifetime commitment of awareness. The narcissist has never, ever been free and demonic abuse is their comfort zone. Remember that. So not only do they have to be aware that they have to steer clear of that comfort zone. Just like many of us kept returning to the comfort of psychological and physical abuse, the narcissist could return to a reprobate mind at any time. Let's keep reading. I'm going to skip on down to verses starting at verse 18. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon possessed begged to him or begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him but said, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell, tell people how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were, ama were amazed. So you see, it's a lifetime commitment. This man and or the narcissist would have to be willing to tell others and show others how different he or she is. They must be consistent. Their words need to match their actions. And he needs to tell them how God's mercy has saved him. This has to be an everyday walk that most 
narcissist cannot do. Remember, the legion of demons which possess them are ruled by the spirit of Leviathan. And this spirit hates God. And it constantly mocks God, blocking any possibility for the narc to be free or even seeing that he or she is captive to their own evil. They think everything is just fine the way it is, no matter how filthy it is, because filth is all that they have ever known. I hope this message makes sense to those of you wondering if change for a narcissist is possible. I wanted to use these scriptures in Mark to let you know how difficult even the thought of change is for them. Many of them will never reach a devastating enough moment in their lives to catch a glimpse of the evil reality of who they are. Because there's always someone asleep who is willing to enable them long enough for them to find a replacement high. So when that one fails, they'll be ready for the next victim. We were once that high for them while they groomed someone else. Most of the narcissists we know will never run dry of supply unless they're dying and at that point of death, well, they're far too self-absorbed to even think of others. So their goal at that point of death is to think about how they can cheat death and escape the fate that every single human being must face. On their deathbed, their grandiose, their last grandiose delusion continues with the possibility that they could be the one to escape. Although no man has ever done this before and death is promised to everyone, including the narcissist, he or she still will believe that they can escape. No change. Never, not once. It's not until that last exhale that most of them get a dose or a glimpse of that reality. When their puppet master comes to collect their souls that they have promised through their behavior and their words, their actions, that puppet master comes to collect their souls for their eternal journey of darkness. So you ask, can a narcissist change? I think not. It would truly take a miracle of God that the narcissist would have to, with his or her own free will, accept. The narcissist truly hates God. So the chance of change is pretty much non-existent. Again, I hope that this response was helpful for you. I thank you all so very much for your time. I would love to hear your comments or response. If you've ever met someone who is a narcissist who has made the decision to change, because I haven't heard of one yet, um, but who has made a decision to change for the better, please let me know in the comments below. And I'm not talking about these fellas who are making YouTube videos where they make money on writing books about narcissism and saying that they have changed a little bit. No, I'm not talking about them. Because we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. We just know that they're able to do something where they make money so it works for them. I'm talking about real, true-to-life change. Someone who has gone back and apologized for their behavior and told others of the mercy that God has bestowed upon them. 
That's the kind of change I'm talking about. I hope that you all feel empowered. I hope that you know that you're not alone. And I hope that you would take this time that you have in your life to be the best you, not just for yourself, but for your children, if you have children, for your other family members, for the friends that love you, for the co-workers that do good for you. I hope that you use this time to be a blessing to those. Don't waste your time hoping for the narcissist to change. It just won't happen. God bless you. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.